There we go. All right, so I have started the recording button, and Perfect. so we are now we are now recording. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah, right. my pleasure. All right, so when you you know I gave you the overview of what it is when you uh, log into Fusion Production, uh, this is the first page that you would wind up seeing. So the, 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 it, which we call the shop floor. So it shows me all of the various workstations that I have in their current state. So what workstations are idle, what workstations are broken that might need attention right away or offline, what, what workstations are actually operating on things and what's offline for maintenance or, or, or other reasons. So you can look at it in this sort of card view or you can look at it in sort of a list view and then you can sort them in other ways. So I could sort by name or other things. I could search um, for, uh, you know, if you have a lot of machines, so you can very quickly find the machine that you're looking at. Um, so it's a pretty powerful way to kind of look at, at what your environment looks like. If you don't have a whole lot of machines, um, it's not particularly, you know, it, some of those things are kind of overkill, but it's a really quick way to kind of see what's going on with the various machines. Um, if I wanted to click into one of these machines, you know, um, I, am, I am showing you a data set from our advanced manufacturing facility. So this is a real manufacturing facility that Autodesk operates out of Birmingham, England. Um, and this is one of the machines and it's working on this uh, clay milling project right now. So here's a picture of the machine. Um, and here's the queue of work. The next job that's waiting for it is this Vortex Thing, which I'm not sure what it is. Um, so I get real quickly a, a good summary of what's going on at this particular location. So if this is the job that it's working on, here are details for this machine. We haven't put any, any more detail about the machine. And then I can also show you machine data for it. So we are reading uh, data from the machine. This machine plugs into Ethernet and uh, we are capturing um, it's production data and so this thing has been producing for some period of time certainly from June 5 until uh, sometime uh, looks like uh, 2 in the morning uh, June 6 so if this is in England this is 10 in the morning um, on June 6 so this was a job that ran overnight there and then they had some unplanned downtime going on so you know with a real quick brush strokes I can tell you what's going on at this workstation um, I can click into this particular job sheet now. And so we're making a clay uh, of this part. So we're machining the clay to show what that looks like. Um, the first task is in progress. So um, I could click into that and show you what it is. And so it's, you know, the checklist is to clear out all of the, the swarf um, and uh, get, you know, get prep this thing before they actually start all the cutting. Um, there is, you know, some details somebody put in and components are, if I'm consuming screws, nuts, bolts, things like that, there would be a list of items that are required there. So those are some of the details that are associated with this particular thing. Since this is in production, I'm not going to mess around with it and mark it done or do, do any of those things. I'll go to a different tenant and show what that looks like. So that's that task. Um, I could show you what the other tasks look like. Um, that haven't been started yet. So the checklist is to get this thing uh, into the oven. Um, and, you know, we want to, here's the, you know, some of the details and there will be no components there. And it takes about five minutes to set up and 15 minutes to complete this work. And it happens at this particular workstation. So you get an idea of, of the kinds of things that are, are possible for, or for detailing out um, tasks here. So here's one that is actually doing the milling on this, um, they didn't put any details on this particular one. So this happens at the Stifflemeyer machine that we have out there. So, so that's, that's kind of um, going from a workstation, um, clicking into that workstation and then showing um, um, what it's working on. The other view that you get from the shop floor is the job sheet. So show me the work that's going on. So in this case, you should have many, many more items here. Um, then you will have workstations because you have an, a, a job sheet for each instance of, uh, you know, for a lot of parts or for each part that you're making to fulfill an order. So you can track it at that level. I can show you all the things that are paused that might need my attention right away. I can show you all the stuff that's sitting around idle and I can show you the things that are being, being produced right now. Um, so let's see here. Let's click on one of these. 
this one, um, the billet prep, uh, you know, here's the, here's this job. There's a picture of it. You know, all these things have um, much more detailed information. So if you click into it, you can see the full detail um, of every one of these images. So it's, it's easier to understand what's going on. So here's the three tasks, the details. This has a setup sheet um, that's associated with it. There's a shared view. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this will take me to, uh, oh no, that downloaded it. Um, this, this shared view is a link to a 3D a browser based solution uh, that shows a 3D model of the part and the fixed string and the tool path um, so that you could you can interact with that and, and see how that works. Um, I, I'm not sure what's going on with that one. Um, but you can include links to other documents. So if you store documents in a, in a network drive someplace or you store things in Google Drive or Box or Dropbox, you could create a link to that information uh, so that it's captured with the job sheet to that other source of information. Um, and then on the status, okay. yeah. So and then on the status report, the first task is complete. It started at this time by this person. Um, it was completed at this time by this person. The estimated time was an hour and five minutes. The actual time took an hour and 55 minutes. Um, and uh, the total runtime was very, very short. <laughs> I think because uh, it, maybe it hasn't um, completed yet. So we also maintain a timeline here. So if the estimate is, the estimate is the blue here and the actual is what's really happening. We started this task and we have run way, way, way long. On, on completing this task. So this gives you a pretty good visual on, on where I am for, for uh, completing various tasks. And now you know that you're, you're, you have to either figure out how to make up this time or um, you, you know, figure out what, what are your course of action to make sure that you, you're gonna deliver this, this project on time when you have some of this visualization. Um, so that's one way to look at, at job sheets. Um, another thing that you can do is I can print the entire um, uh, job sheet. So if I if I wanted to print this thing out and I just wanted um, you know a paper based version of this that 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 was was complete and and accompanied this, I can print this. It'll show me the high level details. It'll show me the links to the setup sheets and it'll show each and every task. So the task, the information, the setup time, a checklist any details associated with it, any checklists, any other attachments. So, um, you know, you can have all of this information associated with this um, so that it's, it's easy to find the information that you need. Um, all right, so that's kind of workstations and job sheets. Uh, we talked about scheduling. Um, and so uh, here is every one of the machines that we have. And here's the work that has been scheduled. And so one of the things that I can do is I could say, okay, you know what? I want this task to be the next task. And I move it forward in the queue. And should I press save, that change will propagate throughout the system. And the person running this machine will know that, that uh, this is the next thing that I'm going to inspect as soon as I'm done with this. And so that, that's pretty cool. Um, another thing that you can do is if you had a whole bunch of similar kinds of um, machines, I could say, you know what, um, for whatever reason, um, this machine is broken and this is why this is paused. I'm gonna move it to this other equivalent machine. Um, and, and so now the, 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 the queue changes for both of these KUKA robots. Um, and now KUKA 2 knows that it's working on both of these jobs while we fix KUKA 1 or whatever the reason is. But in this way, it keeps everything synced up. Um, so we're just managing a queue right now, but inside of 30 days, these things will, will have, um, uh, their width will be proportional to the amount of time they take. So if I had two jobs that both took an hour, you know, this, this width would represent an hour and this width would represent an hour and the total width would be two hours. Whereas if these were all 15 minutes, I'd have three really short ones, one, two, and three, that would show 45 minutes of time there. So we're trying to make it easier to understand the actual capacity required or uh, that is that is scheduled for each one of these workstations. So that's that's something that's coming for our overall scheduling. Um, and then uh, on reports, I don't want to save my changes there. We have some standard kinds of reports for availability in workstations. I showed you one of those on the workstations, but the ones that are interesting to me are the 
the machine data. So if we um, you know, go to the device details for one of these machines, it will open up our machine data solution. And uh, what I will pick is I'll pick the machine that oh, was, I think it was that one that we're using. And it will show me um, you know, the data from the, you know, the latest data for this particular machine. So this is what we were shown. We've been producing for four hours. We have no unplanned downtime, no planned downtime, 14 minutes of unplanned downtime, and, uh, 50, and four hours of data unavailable. I, I'm not sure what that means in this particular case. But you know, I'm getting more data about what's happening on the equipment in my particular uh, environment, and then and then there's a list down here of every one of the events, so I can get more detail about about each one of the things that happened uh, up here, um, and then I can zoom into it as well. So if I want to look at a, a particular area of what happened when, there, those are some of the things that are possible there. Um, I can show you dashboards. So if you want to put a monitor in your production space that has all of your machines and what are they doing? Uh, oh, I, I, did a, uh, I did a swipe left thing that just doesn't work. Okay, so I can show you uh, this dashboard that shows you the, the, of all the machines that I have and what is their current status. So we were just looking at, um, which machine were we looking at? We were looking at uh, this machine over here, but the DMG Mori is offline right now for some reason our data is unavailable. The Mazak has been, you know, pretty low in its utilization, and the Huron has been cutting a certain amount of stuff over there. So, you know, in this way, you can show other, you know, you get a high-level view of what's going on across the various machines that, that are in your production space. And you just saw this one change state, so not sure what they're doing over there. But, you know, this is because this is live data from our manufacturing place in the UK. Um, uh, okay. Who on the floor has access to all those information? Uh, it's up to you. Um, we we have sort of three levels of users. We have an administrator who can pretty much do anything. Uh, we have a um, an authoring role, someone who can create work instructions and who can dispatch them to the production floor and who can approve the work state or the job sheets that are complete. And then we have an operator, a machine operator, and the machine operator can complete the tasks on each one of the workstations, and they can view this data but they cannot change any of this data. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's some of the machine data. Uh, there's, there's a variety of other reports that are available there depending on what you're, what you're trying to look for. Um, and then the last thing that I would show you real quick is you know, creating um, job instructions. So this is the template for what I'm gonna make. Um, you know, I have a list of things that I've made here. I'm going to go to one. Uh, okay, I'm going to go to a different one so I don't mess this one up. Um, uh, uh, so if I have a whole bunch of different job sheets here, uh, I might need to look for one. So this one is the transmission end plate B and C. If I want to create a new version of this one, I could say, okay, I want to I want to look at the latest version of it, and I want to duplicate it. Yeah, I want to duplicate this one, and now I'm going to call this Rev D. And uh, Rev D might have some optimized CNC code, uh, G code. It might have it, you know, some other stuff. And I would go through and I would change all the little things that that I want to to modify in this, and then I would save this particular job instruction. And so now, uh, if I go back to the uh, job instructions and I go transmission, um, I should see three different ones. So any job sheet that was released to production that was Rev C will stay Rev C. And, and so we're not changing anything that was um, out in production that was this particular version. For, for traceability reasons, for a whole for a wide variety of things, we don't want to, we, we can't change things that have been released to production. Um, and then if someone wanted to produce the new version, they would dispatch, they would select this one and dispatch job sheets, but you still have Rev B and Rev C in your query of job instructions. So if you needed to go back, and make one of the prior versions, you could do that as well. Um, so that's kind of cop, you know, the quickest way to create a new one. It's basically taking an existing work, an existing job, and saying it's the same, but with minor edits. 
you can also start clearly from scratch. So just create from new. I enter the name. I add a picture. I, you know, I say how many parts I'm going to make, put some details in, give it tags, um, drag and drop, you know, drawings or PDF or CNC code, whatever we want. I can add tasks. Um, it's a relatively straightforward process for, for authoring these things or editing them when, when you need to change them. So that's what job instructions uh, kind of look like. Uh, I want to cancel that. Um, so does this apply only for CNC machining? No, you could say um, I have a lot of different kinds of workstations. Um, let me go back to, to this one because it's probably the best representation. I've got a workstation. I workbench. I, have, I, I, I can have workstations for inspection, deburring, cutoff, you know, whatever, whatever you want to, want to identify as a place that work happens in your production space. You can say this is a workstation and you can assign a task to it. So if you're always doing your inspection at this one workbench in the corner, you could have a workstation that is corner workbench and you just assign your inspection tasks there or packaging and shipping or receiving um, areas. They can also be areas for or inventory where you need to go get a billet of material. All of these are, are able, you can specify those things as workstations. And then the notion of a work cell is to say, generally these things are related. So all your three axis machines, all your inspection um, stations, all of your you know, manual assembly stations, workbenches might be um, a kind of a work cell. Um, and they have children workstation. So in this way you can say, hey, you know, uh, you know I, want, I want to do this task at a three axis machine. I'm going to assign it to the work cell and any one of the three machines that I have is okay to run this job on. Okay. So, okay. Um, so that's kind of work cells and workstations. Components are parts. Um, if, I, uh, if I have a, um, a list of uh, parts that I consume for some of my jobs, I can keep track of the components. Um, and, and then what happens is you say how many, when in your job uh, instruction, I tell you how many parts you need to consume of this component. And then you can kind of get an idea of how many parts that you've consumed over time. And then the user management thing is pretty straightforward. You asked the question before, um, if I want to invite somebody, um, uh, Ryan Batman at Autodesk, um, okay, so you just, this is the way that you would add a new user and you would say, uh, what role are they? Are they an operator? So they the person that uses the, the mobile device or, or works on their shop floor. Are they a manager or like a manufacturing engineer, the person that authors the work instructions, or are they an administrator to, to, that can um, change anything in the system? And so that's all you do. You send an invite, they get an email, and then they can um, confirm their um, uh, identity and then log into this right away. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, that's okay. kind of the high level of all of the stuff that, that Fusion Production does. Does, does. Do you have any, any questions or does this all make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I have just a few questions. Uh, Ross told me that I think for three CNC machine, there was, let's say, a, a price. What do you identify as a CNC machine or is it the workstation? How does this work? Oh, okay. So for the, the, the package thing that we have, when we were saying this is for three CNC machines, um, the, the, that component of the offer is so that you can capture machine data. So what we would, we would be looking for is probably to connect to one of your Haas machines and to be able to read the machine data from that. Um, if you were um, looking, if you, if you, so, so, so if you were less interested in the machine data, um, you know, those parts are not, not required for an engagement. You don't have to have the machine data um, to get value out of this. Like, you know, where we started is it's really about making sure that you have the right information. Um, the machine data is, is uh, definitely valuable, but it's not mandatory. Yeah, totally agree. So let's say we have 30 machines. What would be a good price for us? What would be a good price for you? Uh, you know, I, I am generally not the pricing guy. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> I would I would let you work with uh, with uh, your representative to kind of figure out what pricing looks like. I will tell you what our you know the generally how we have priced it, um, and then you can figure out with with um, uh, with your team what what makes sense. Um, we so the the fusion production part, the job tracking part right now is a hundred dollars a month per user. Um, and, uh, and regardless of what, what user type you are. So it winds up being about $1,200 a year per, per person that is connected up to this, um, for machine data, which is a separate thing. Um, there is a cost to connect your machine to the, the internet so that we can capture the information. And, um, I, for, for think machines that are not Siemens, I think that you are in the in the seven hundred and fifty dollars per machine range to connect that um, uh, connect that machine to the the, the internet, uh, and then uh, and then it's consumption based pricing. So we charge you twenty cloud credits per day to capture that information um, and make it available to you. So if, if you use if you report data for more than thirty minutes in one day, we'll say, hey, you use this for a day. But if you report it for less than 30 minutes or don't use it at all, you're not going to get charged at all. So likely if you're not cutting anything on the weekend or everyone takes a vacation, you're not, you're not paying for that time. Okay. So that's how it's priced. Well, you answered pretty well, you answered pretty well our question. <laughs> okay, cool. So now do I need to talk with Russ about the price and everything? Probably. Yeah, Jonathan, yeah, I'm, I'm actually here. So, yeah, as I said before, you wanted to see the presentation. And, of course, we want to know how many machines, how many users, um, how much, you know, how much time a day you can be collecting this data. But definitely I can work with you. And okay. uh, we can, we can uh, work on the offer. And uh, uh, let me just uh, uh, send you an email after this presentation with the information that I need from you. And then I can work on it. Okay. Tool. Absolutely. Okay. And let, let me offer, if you're interested in sort of, you know, seeing this up, up close and personal, we can set up a trial for you um, where we can set you up and you can begin poking around and seeing how difficult, how easy or difficult it is to use. And if you have more questions, we're more than happy to answer. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. So I'll talk with Ross and see the prize just to have some information about it. And then if we're satisfied with it, we, we could get a little, uh, a trial. Sounds good. Perfect. Okay. I think that's about it about the uh, product fusion production. Fantastic. If you're thinking about it and you, you know, get off the phone momentarily and go, Oh shoot, I should ask that. Feel free to send me an email. I'm, I'm happy to answer. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. All right. Thank you very much. You did Thank a great you, job. I'll send, I'll send an email. Okay, y'all have a great day. <laughs> you too. Thanks. Thank you. You too. Okay, bye-bye.